Hey there, Emma here. And in 2023, I hosted a painting challenge called Dogtober, where we painted a different dog breed every day of the month. You may have seen some of the clips that I posted on shorts at the time, just showing like a few little clips from each painting, but I've decided to go and pull out the real time footage and share them this year so you can follow along if you'd like to. A couple of disclaimers slash explainers. The point of the challenge for me was that I wanted to try and loosen up. I'm a realistic portrait artist and so I gave myself a smaller size to work with as well as a time frame. I'm painting on roughly about A6 size paper, which is pretty small. In terms of measurements, that's like roughly 10 and a half centimeters by 14.8 centimeters or 4.1 by 5.8 inches. And I also tried to set myself a time limit of about 15 minutes. I really wanted to challenge myself to loosen up, but you can approach this any way you like. Maybe you'll do it in a different medium or a certain color palette. The options are endless, totally up to you, but you're more than welcome to follow along. And these are kind of like mini tutorials. I do want to point out though, that as this was unusual for me and a challenge to me, not all of them are that good. <laughs> I really struggled in the beginning to start loosening up and particularly struggled with the long haired dogs, but you know, it's an adventure and you'll see me progress through the month and learn a lot. If you wanna grab the outline sketches, I have put all 31 sketches into a document, a PDF that you can download from my website. I will link that in the description. You'll just need to pop your email address in, which will sign you up to my mailing list, but then you'll get the document with all 31 outline sketches, roughly about the same size that I'm painting. You're more than welcome to print them, trace them, size them up or down if you need to. I'll be working with my usual set of supplies and mixing colors as well, but I will talk you through the process as we go. Let's jump in. Welcome to day 31, the last day of Dogtober. We made it. We are painting a Yorkshire Terrier to wrap up this series. So I'm gonna get started. It's a pretty quick and simple one. So I have some orangey brown on my palette. This is leftover from previous Dogtobers. To mix this up, you need orange and then a little bit of blue just to take the edge off the orange. I've gone and put a really light wash over the ears and then dabbed some darker color on the center of the ears. And now I'm gonna start just like whipping around this whole dog. So it's a quick, fast paced tutorial. I really wanted to make the thick wiry fur in a way that wasn't gonna to be too tedious. I also wanted to cut out, like negatively paint some of it on the head that's gonna be lighter. So that's where you can see these very obvious zigzag strokes that I have left on top of the head and I've pulled some big chunks of fur out to the right. And I've just taken that down the side of the face for now, and I'm gonna just go around this little eye here with more of a watery wash of this color and do a similar thing on the little fluff on the muzzle. So just negatively paint around some of that before we continue down around the face. So going down and negatively cutting out this little fluffy muzzle next to the nose and mouth, I'm mixing up some more intense orange now. And then as you can see, adding the blue to neutralize that. And you do sometimes have to keep adjusting this mix depending on how it looks. My mixes often look a bit green, which means that I put some red in there to neutralize that. Then I'm also making a separate puddle down the bottom there of a darker brown. So that is just where you have more blue in there than orange. But again, just watch out for any kind of biases that you don't want in there. And I'm continuing down the dog. So we have switched into this darker brown and I'm just very choppy, very quickly, just throwing some color in there. And we have this kind of interesting gradient now happening down the dog. I'm making my mixture a little bit more orange by adding more red and yellow before switching in and popping that color like right under the fluffy mustache. So I'm taking that right up against the I guess the whole mustache, <laughs> we are gonna leave even just a bit on the bottom of the mouth as well. And then I'm kind of wrapping it around the far side there to, to color in that side of the mustache and taking a watery mixture up on like the bottom lip before getting rid of some water, some moisture on my brush, cutting some fur in on the right side of the mustache and flicking over to pale fur, pale colored fur. Then we're gonna switch back into a more orangey color as we wrap around under the far eye, or like the eyebrow, I should say, wrap around the eye. And that's just gonna help define that. A little bit of lighter color on the far side of the mustache, and then flicking some on top of the head as well. 
popping some deeper color back in the center of those ears and it's dried a little bit at this stage so it's going to a stand out a little bit more but then also just match what we've been doing everywhere else it's not a soft blend that we're doing we're doing quite rough strokes I'm going to deepen up the right side of the face just cutting in around the facial details and the edge there deepening that up really sweeping quick strokes rinsing off dabbing off and what I want to do now is put a little bit of gray color in the white of the fur so if you don't have that color mixed up again I'm just reusing what I've got on the palette we've mixed this a few times during Dogtober you do a similar thing as the brown but you just have a lot more blue in that mixture and you can even do it the opposite way like you start with a blue puddle and then you add a teensy bit of orange to it and that will take the punchiness out of the blue so I've just very loosely thrown that on the chest of the dog there in between all the brown strokes and I'm also doing that on top of the head as well on that big fluffy white area we left blank so just flicking that over just trying to roughly fill in all the gaps without necessarily taking it to the edge and having no gaps because I don't want it to just blend in with all the color we've placed down with our orangey color I'm just going around the eyes again so we're cutting that out from the eyebrows and also just defining around the eyes wrapping it around the nose as well taking out a little mouth shape there a little kind of triangular shape and blending that across the muzzle adding a bit more under the mustache and flicking that upwards towards the mouth blending it in just playing around at this point having a feel it's very high contrast popping some more color on the inner ears on both sides a little bit more brown and just taking that along the edge of the right side of the dog and a little bit more orange to fill in the inner part of that a little bit of brown and just dropping that on the back because that's kind of dissipated a little bit where we placed it down there so deepening that up before we dry it off and now drying it off and we only have like two and a half minutes left of this video like <laughs> it is a quick one I'm dipping into some Mars black now possibly could have done this on the same layer before drying it off but just popping in the nostrils in black popping in our little tiny comma shape and we can see less of the one on the other side so we don't need to make the match and the line down the middle that's going towards the open mouth well sorry not the open mouth but the mouth just added some blue into my orange and obviously added way too much so just going to mix that all in I was just looking for a brown color to paint the little eyes in so much like all the other dogtober tutorials we don't need to take it all the way to the edge of the shape that we negatively painted but filling it in as much as we can and then dabbing the excess off and just painting a teeny tiny little bit on the far side we can't really see that eye though and then we can dry that off back into that darker color and I'm just going to roughly pop some dark fur on those inner ears I just wanted to deepen them up a little bit more a little bit of black on my palette and mixing that in with the brown dabbing off the brush I'm going to paint this nose in so a bit of a V shape at the bottom and then we can kind of invite that color up with water dipping into some white now to highlight the eyes so nice and concentrated on a small brush and just dabbing this at the top of the eye I like to do a big dot and a little dot if I can fit it can't really see the one on the far side but just did it anyway and drying that all off and then let's just darken the nose again because it's gone very pale and invite that color up a bit more black into my brown mixture and I'm just going to carefully go around the highlight of the eye just deepening up the eyes a little bit there 
drying that all off and that is our Yorkshire Terrier that is a wrap on Dogtober thank you so much for joining me whether you painted one dog or all 31 I hope you had a fun time and I hope you learned a lot about watercolor if you enjoyed painting along with me and you like my instructional style there are over a hundred realistic watercolor wildlife tutorials within my Academy Paint Wild at paintwild.com and you're more than welcome to join the fun at any time. Alternatively, keep an eye out on YouTube for some more general watercolor videos coming soon. And I hope you enjoyed this series. Let me know if you would like to see Dogtober 2025 and if so, what breeds we should do. And maybe we'll be back next year. I'll see you in another video soon though. Bye.